individual that also have a lot of respect for because he was one of the members of Queen City Toastmasters when I when I joined. He's been around for a long time and he's taught me a lot. And we're going to bring up Mr. Steve, Stephen Murphy and he's going to be talking about community service. Has anyone ever heard about the concept of the straight and narrow? Mm -hmm. When I was young, my coaches, my parents used to instead tell me, stay on the straight and narrow. What does that mean to you? To me it means to do right and not wrong. To not stray from the laws of a just society. But nowadays too many people stray from the straight and narrow. They fall off to the right or to the left and they find themselves charged with a crime. And if convicted, they often get lengthy prison sentences. Now, is this any way to treat our people? I'd say, no, it's terrible. Our problem with it is, first of all, in America, we have over a million people in prisons at any one time, more than any other society. And prisons are so expensive. It costs forty thousand dollars per year per prisoner, and that's a whole lot of money that we could use for some other program that's more beneficial to society. So, are there any other alternatives that we can do for people that are in need of guidance that have done a crime, especially youthful offenders or first-time offenders? I say yes, and I'd like to recommend one alternative to you today. And that is community service, as opposed to imprisonment for first-time offenders. It can be very effective. Just what is community service? It is requiring a person to do unpaid labor for a set number of hours or to complete a specific task. Now, it does require a judge to sentence somebody to community service as opposed to prison. And it requires probation authorities who are going to monitor the projects to make sure that the work gets done as they say it will get done, that the workers are not exploited, and that there's no unsafe conditions at, the, at their task. So if all these things can be met, let's try to give community service out. Now, what kind of projects can we use for community service? It's almost endless, whatever whatever society you need. You know, if you see those people as you drive down the highways, cleaning the highways, I say, let's make these people community service. Hospitals might need to be staffed, or clinics might need to be staffed. Again, these are useful ways to put people to work, rather than just having them sit in a warehouse in prison, have them do these specific tasks. So I know this society in America, we love to send people to prison. But I try to recommend to you today to consider the alternative of community service. And I'd like to share with you two stories about progressive nations in this world, how you have used community service successfully. And the first one is Thailand in Southeast Asia. It's a big beach community. They got a lot of bars. And they had a problem with drinking and driving over there. So what they did is they enlisted the help of actors, and sports stars who got into drunk driving and they did public service campaigns to educate people about what are the problems with drinking and driving and why they shouldn't do it. And then when they actually got first time offenders who did this drinking and driving, they sentenced them to community service. They got the community to rally behind this. Over 91% of the community said yes, this is a just and fair sentence for first time drunk drivers. And where did they sentence these people? They sentenced them to tasks that would educate them about the dangers of drinking and driving, such as cleaning up accidents on the road, or working in hospitals or rehab clinics. All these things helped sensitize these people to the dangers of drinking and driving. And Thailand found it very successful. The other nation I'll tell you is in Africa, Zimbabwe. They, they didn't have a lot of money at the time, so they checked out their prison population. And they found over 80% of their prison population was in prison for one year or less. So these were not 
violent offenders, most of them by and large. A lot of them were in prison only because they couldn't afford to pay a fine to get out. So Zimbabwe said, is there a way we can use community service to have these people maybe do something that's more useful than sitting in prison? So they decided, yes, let's give this a try. But at the time, they had no probation authority. So they had to do it all with community support. And that's what they did. They got service. People who needed services, such as hospitals and clinics to call in, and then they got volunteers who got these people tasked up with someone, someone who needed the job done and someone who could do the job. So they tasked these people up and the community service got done. And Zimbabwe had such great, they saw such great benefits for this. Um, you know, over 91% of the people who were sentenced to community service during this trial period completed their service projects satisfactorily. And the rates of recidivism or repeat offenders was lower for those who were assigned to community service rather than those who were assigned traditional prison term. And that's just because once you get into prison, you tend to get into a cycle where you want to repeat and repeat, and you get worse and worse the more time you spend in prison. So I want to encourage you all to think outside the box. Think about community service as an alternative to imprisonment. If you like this idea, read more about it, contact your public officials. So I think if we all use community service, it can pay dividends both to the convict and well to society at large. Keep people out of prison.